Well, let me introduce to you our next little video series on YouTube here. This is a 1964 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia convertible. And so we're just going to give you some of the highlights and some of the considerations in doing a conversion. These are actually probably one of the easiest conversions to do is the Carmen Ghia. Um, kind of like the bug. The Beetles are also very simplistic to do in comparative uh, terms uh, to other vehicles. And one of the main reasons is they don't have an, a motor mount to worry about. In other words, the motor mounts right to the transaxle with four bolts and it's cantilevered off the transaxle and there's no other motor mounting set up to deal with. And so that's one nice aspect. No motor mounts to design and build. The other is, you know, with the typical Carmen Ghia, um, we're able to put all the batteries in one spot, kind of down on the floor um, or on top of the tunnel behind the seats. And that makes for a very nice weight placement. It leaves all the room under the bonnet open, which we'll look at in a moment. And it's the preferred way that, that uh, we do the Carmen Gius. Now the convertible's a different situation because of the narrower back end here behind the seats. And it's necessitated because of the um, mechanism for the convertible top. So this will be more like a beetle where some of the cells will be in the rear and some will be in the front under the bonnet. Now, retaining the rear seat in a Carmen Ghia is not a big deal. They really don't have much of a back seat. Matter of fact, the 73s and 74s don't have a back seat at all. They just have what they call a package shelf, which looks similar to this. And so this um, is actually the back of the seat and the bench has been removed. Um, but you can, you know, lift up the bench and drop this down and it gives you that package shelf. But you can see uh, the people own this car are shorter than I am and uh, you know they have plenty of leg room I have plenty of leg room um, but even with you know the seat you know somewhat forward there's not a whole lot of rear leg room so this is more of a you know for throwing groceries or whatever uh, than it is for throwing uh, other occupants and so uh, we'll have the batteries they'll sit up a little bit higher than this package shelf does but that will put our weight in a good location it keeps it down low keeping that center of gravity down low and uh, makes a nice setup uh, you know we autocross ours we've uh, taken it to the racetrack numerous times and it actually does quite well it handles on par with the Miatas um, but we've done a few things to ours to, to help it in that regard. Um, it's lowered a little bit, um, has front and rear anti sway bars, um, so forth. But just wanted to give you a, a kind of an overview of the, what the vehicle looks like. Very similar to the 74s, different, uh, uh, you know, the later ones, different. Uh, bumpers and turn signals, but the body is actually uh, pretty much unchanged from 53 to 74. So let's, uh, let's pop the bonnet and look under the front and then we'll, we'll take a look at the back and the engine as received. So here you have it. The later ones uh, have the fuel filler up here. The earlier ones, just like on the bugs, it's underneath the bonnet. So here's the fuel filler. Where the spare tire went, 
you know, for, for vehicles uh, like the electric vehicles, it, it's, you know, the spare tire really is not worth it unless you get a lot of flats. I've had one flat and 100,000 miles on my Carmen Ghia. Um, and it, I just called the tow truck and had them take it to the shop, and I took care of the tire on my own. But, um, you know, we usually recommend losing the spare tire, the jack, lose that weight, and, um, and, and have that space for something else if you, if you absolutely want it. But, you know, weight affects the range, so keep the car light, keep the range up. So here's a shot of the rear of the vehicle. You can see they really didn't change much. The, the rear lights are a little different and, the, and the, the bumper. But the rest of the lines are pretty much the same. Not any drastic changes. Now, notice the, uh, the rake of the vehicle. And, uh, and that's common on old VWs. This lower in the back than it is in the front because they don't have much weight on the front axle from the factory. And uh, the rear, the you know, after 50 years, the old uh, torsion bars get a little saggy. And so this is a common, you know, common scenario. And so recommend that you have that taken care of uh, prior to conversion. And there's different ways to do that. You can replace the torsion bars. You can, uh, Go with uh, shocks with override springs. Uh, you can use air shocks. There's lots of ways to do it, and I'm not going to tell you how to do that. You can figure out which is the best way for you, and uh, and take care of that. So let's take a look at the uh, at the engine compartment. Well, there it is, the mighty 40 horse, <laughs> 1200 cc. Volkswagen engine. Horizontally opposed, four cylinder. And you can see the 12 volt battery right there. On the later models, they moved it over to the other side. And, uh, but we're going to remove the 12 volt battery from the rear of the car. We're going to put it up where the spare tire was. We're wanting to put a little more weight up on the front to increase our our 50-50 uh, um, percentage. We're not going to hit 50-50, but you know, by taking weight off the rear and adding it to the front, we're helping that cause. And you know, from aesthetics, we're going to have uh, the engine bay will be uh, much cleaner than it is now, and the 12 volt battery just detracts from it. Putting it down in the hole where the uh, uh, spare tire goes is um, you know it, it helps the other thing is that you know the 12 volt battery uh, all the electronics uh, you know for the most part on the vehicle are in the front but uh, you know they've got wiring that runs front to back already so for us to get the 12 volt signals we need in the rear we don't have to run any wire Volkswagen's already done that for us and so they just have, you know, uh, cabling that goes from the battery here to the starter, which is not too much in front of this battery, and, uh, and on the same side. And so it just goes from the positive here down to the solenoid that's mounted on the starter motor. So we're not going to be using a starter motor or a solenoid, and so... We, that, that wiring can go away. So anyway, that's uh, kind of what, uh, what we're starting off with. Um, this will look just like all the others. I mean, we're going to have the uh, engine compartment uh, cleaned up and, and kind of uh, uh, closed off. And, um, and just have your motor and your, your uh, controller and few items back here the uh, charger and uh, DC to DC converter will be up front our charge port will be up front and so 
Um, we're going to have a real clean engine bay here. We'll have room for groceries and so forth under the bonnet in the uh, front as well as in the uh, cavity behind uh, the battery pack right here. This area goes all the way back to the firewall. So it's nice and deep. So you can stash all sorts of things back there and it's they're not really seen. Um, and so it, it makes for a, a nice handy little storage area. This has a, a nice big tack in the dash. We'll maintain operation of that. The other side's a speedometer. And uh, so those two will stay. All your controls will stay. Nothing's going to look any different. The difference will be that that um, fuel gauge is going away. And that's going to be replaced by the Curtis 840 display, which will be monitoring our motor and our controller. And then here where the radio blank is, we're going to put our JLD 404 and we'll put a 12 volt, our video 12 volt gauge right there to monitor our 12 volt system. And the JLD 404 monitors our, um, our battery pack. So that's it. That's kind of the overview of what's going to take place. And, uh, you know, we welcome you to follow along and see how it turns out. But, you know, if you want to do this yourself, the fastest, easiest, and best way to learn how to do this and to do it right the very first time is to attend one of ev for us three-day hands-on conversion workshops. Or you can take our online EV workshop. Either way, you will learn everything you need to know to convert any vehicle or a vessel. You want to convert uh, your sailboat, your patio boat, your houseboat, your ski boat. You get the information necessary to be able to do those things. Uh, your ATV. And so not just a vehicle. Motorcycle, same thing. They all use the same components. And we give the information to calculate, you know, what size components and, uh, and all the other characteristics that are necessary to make sure that your components are compatible with your conversion vehicle or vessel and, uh, and that you don't waste any money and you do it right the first time. So the three-day hands-on conversion workshops are um, conducted in our Northern California uh, warehouse. And, um, you know, people from all over the world have attended. And people from all over the world have uh, done their own conversions. Many have started their own conversion businesses. And it, it, it's just a great opportunity to learn and meet other people hear everybody's questions and have a, a good learning experience and just a good time. But for those that don't want to have to travel to uh, Northern California, don't have the time, whatever, our online EV workshops are actually more in-depth than our three-day hands-on conversion workshops because there isn't that three-day time limitation. So they're quite in-depth. Uh, I believe there's six different vehicles that are featured in the video series, which is around 30 hours in length. And so you get a lot of information, a lot of examples, a lot of material. But the upside uh, uh, of the uh, time and location is that you can do it from anywhere at any time. It's online at your convenience. You, once you sign up and register, you're able to watch the material anytime you like. And then, of course, with both workshops, both either online or in person, you get an hour of free consultation. 
And so once you've taken the workshop or viewed the workshop online, if you were to have any questions, you can ask us and uh, we'll, we'll spend you know, as much time as you want, but um, you get an hour included. So uh, if we know that you're uh, a, a former workshop attendee or you uh, purchased the online workshop, your phone call is prioritized. We're going to help you now and uh, we're going to get you all the information that you want. But they're so thorough, you really shouldn't have too many questions. But, you know, if there was something that uh, you, uh, you wanted to go over and, or something about your individual particular project you wanted to ask questions about, we've done a lot of conversions of a lot of different types of uh, um, vessels and vehicles. And so we have the experience and knowledge to be able to help you and are glad to do so. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next video as we continue our short series on the conversion of this 1964 VW Carmen Ghia convertible.